In this chapter, we're going to talk about this class of compounds called alkynes that feature carbon-carbon triple bonds. In Chemistry 211, early in your textbook, it introduces alkanes in which all of the carbon-carbon bonds are single, and then it progressed to alkenes in chapters 5 and 6, where it dealt with properties and reactions of uh, substances that had carbon-carbon double bonds. And so we're going to kind of complete the set here. The other kind of bonding pattern is for there to be triple bonds. These uh, alkynes are not as common as alkanes or as alkenes for that matter, but they do uh, have some important chemistry. And we're going to see a little bit uh, about what that chemistry involves here in this chapter. And like I do whenever I introduce a new class of compounds, we're going to want to be able to put names and structures together. So you can see from the word alkyne itself that Y and E becomes the suffix that's at the end of any particular uh, such compound. So the simplest case is two carbons sharing a triple bond, in which case we get ethyne. And you can see in red on the right that's also more famously known as acetylene, which is the reason for the welder picture on that previous slide. Acetylene burns with oxygen to create enough heat to melt steel. That's certainly a major use of that. Um, and so from ethyne, if you have three carbons, that's based on propane, but because of the triple bond, we have propyne. Uh, for the butynes, you can see we've got two types. Just as we do with carbon-carbon double bonds, uh, we have to sometimes use a number to indicate at which carbon the triple bond begins. So in one butyne, it, it starts at carbon one. In two butyne, you can see it starts at carbon number two. And so you would have uh, isomers of pentyne with five carbons. There's a couple of those. There's a one, two, and a three hexyne with six carbons, and, and so on. Um, <clears throat> and just as with double bonds, when we number the chain, we normally are numbering in the direction to give us the lowest number for locating that multiple bond. Uh, and then you can have things like methyl groups or chlorine atoms hanging off, and, and we use numbers to designate those. And your textbook at the end of Chapter 9 has a number of naming exercises to get you used to dealing with these. Notice that uh, all of the carbons <clears throat> have four bonds total. When three of those bonds are being shared, that means alkynes have fewer hydrogens than the corresponding alkene would have and certainly fewer than the corresponding alkane because every time we make that extra multiple bond between carbons we have to get rid of a couple of hydrogens to do that. But we still have the total of four bonds per carbon so that allows us to draw structures as long as we know how many carbons are in our chain and where that triple bond is located. Um, <clears throat> As it says on this slide, I, I'm going to address this topic of hybridization in a separate lesson. Uh, I don't use the hybridization concept a whole lot in this course, but if you are destined to be taking uh, standardized tests like an MCAT or PCAT, they do involve uh, questions that deal with this business of hybridization. So um, I'm going to defer that topic to a, another lesson. It certainly is mentioned uh, somewhat in, in Chapter 9 here because it has to do with explaining the bonding in alkynes and how that is contrasted with what's going on with the double bonds, the alkenes, as well as uh, the simpler alkanes with all single bonds. This slide uh, has a <clears throat> comparison of a number of properties for these classes of hydrocarbons. And this is not a situation where you need to know all this data. However, these structural formulas are a handy as a, a quick way to compare these. Not only do these structures show whether you have a single bond or a double or a triple bond, but it also reflects the geometry of these molecules. We've got our tetrahedral shape around uh, the carbon-carbon single bonds that we've seen before. Uh, once you put the double bond there, we say that this is a, has the trigonal planar geometry. Each carbon has three other atoms it's attached to, and the bond angles, as you see there, are close to 120 degrees. Uh, and then finally, if you were to put together a model of acetylene or ethyne, uh, the triple bond uh, would, would show you that the hydrogens, when they're attached, will make a 180 degree bond angle, which we also refer to as linear. 
So the atoms that are on either side of this carbon-carbon triple bond will necessarily be in that straight line. Um, and as I say, that relates to this hybridization that you can uh, read more or hear more about in, in, in another lesson here. Um, <clears throat> one thing that we're going to address in this chapter that's a important distinction has to do with this business of PKA in this very bottom line here. So we're going to talk about that in the second part.